Okay, today we're going to try and have a look at building an FM radio. We've got this little kit from Conrad, which is really nice because the case itself is the box it comes in. That's a pretty nice kit. A good few parts. Just about everything you need. What we will be doing, which is slightly different, and just to make it easier for the video, we give you one sort of hookup wire, just the red. But we've got all sorts of other colours which we'll use just to try and make the installation a little bit easier as we video it. The other thing you're going to need, apart from the hookup wire, is a pair of wire cutters, some solder, and a soldering iron. And that should be it. One final thing, I guess. We need the instruction manual. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I've done is put everything laid out so I can make sure that everything that's supposed to be there actually is there. And while I was at it, I've picked up another couple of bits which I think might prove useful. A screwdriver and a pack of batteries. So let's crack in and start work. Okay, the first step we need to do is assemble the controls. So we'll open the box. We've got two of these potentiometers. One, you can see, B22K. That one goes on the right. And this little locating pin here pops into that hole. And the other one, with the locating pin again goes on the left. That stops them turning and we need to pop a washer on each one and then the nut. Tighten those up. This is a 10 mil spanner, but equally, can you see that's turned? A locating pin in the right place. Pop it in, and we'll hold it tight with my finger on the other side. say this is a 10mm spanner but equally you could use a pair of pliers. Hold it into the locating pin, finger tight and nip it up with the spanner. At some point the knobs will be going on but we'll leave those for the minute. The next step is to install the speaker, and this is real easy. That's it. Next step is to take the aerial, the screw, and the solder lug and assemble them. Put your finger on the screw, it's a lot easier to locate. Hold the screw still and twist the aerial just to get it started, and then we can nip it up. Okay, and this is going to go through this hole here and also mount onto this which we're going to secure into the box with the included sticky tape. Double-sided tape can drive you mad. This will be the hardest part of the entire build. Make 
sure we get it lined up correctly. Push the aerial into place. Done. We need to make two coils. So I'm going to use some purple wire for L1 and some orange wire for L2. They're both made exactly the same. I'm going to use this capacitor just as a little mandrel. And what we need is three turns, like so. And they need to be from this end to this end, about seven millimeters. So once we've wrapped them, we'll just pull them apart with our finger. Then before we come off, let's put kinky in the bottom there and there. Grab our wire cutters. And what we need to do is pull the insulation off. Again, just get it all nicely formed before taking it off. I'll do the same with the purple one. Okay, here's the printed circuit board. I hope that's in focus. So we're going to solder on these two coils. So purple was coil one. That's going to go in here. The orange was coil two, and that goes in here. A little tip, it's a piece of cellar tip, which we could just pop that over the top, push it where we need. When we turn it upside down, that's not going to come out, it means we can solder it in place nicely, and we've still got a little bit of adjustment. Solder that up. So the iron's hot and it's clean. joints we can take off the tip. So our first coil is done. Now take our cutters, cut them off just above the solder. Next we're going to get some resistors in. R1 is 4.7k now the colour pattern on that is yellow, violet, red, then gold. What we're going to do is we're going to bend it back on itself. So that can go through position R1. Cellar tape trick again, and we can solder that in place. We've 
because it's really awkward trying to do this with the camera I'm going to go ahead and solder the other resistors in and come back okay so I've installed another four resistors R1 the original one that you saw R2 which is here and that's a 220 kilo ohm red red yellow R3 which is a 1 kilo ohm brown black red R5 this one underneath which is 330 kilo ohms orange orange yellow and above it R6 which is 33 ohms orange orange black then we need to snip the wires off at the back Okay. Now we've got three capacitors to fit. A variable capacitor. That goes in down here. Make sure you get that the right way around. The electrolytic capacitor. Again, we need to make sure you get the positive and minus the right way around. See the minus is pointing to the plus, we've got that wrong. There we go. And the ceramic capacitor. Okay, so I'm going to use my cellar tape and get those soldered in. If you look where I'm cutting, I'm not cutting right down at the board, I'm not cutting up here. It's just above the solder mound. I hope you can see that because that is really awkward for me to hold my hands like that. Okay, now we'll get the transistors in place. We've got two transistors, and they're going to go here. This is transistor 2. That's the NPN, the 547. This transistor 1 is a PNP type 557. Don't get those two mixed up. Okay. So that's the two transistors in place. Let's get them soldered. I need my cell tip just to stop that popping out while we get it exactly where we want it. check and off with the wires the next step is to put on the wires which are going to connect up to the potentiometers the variable resistors 
the loudspeaker. So I'm going to use different colours, but you can use the included red. So we've got some grey, which I'll just make an end, and some pink. That's what's going to the speaker. So we'll get that in place. Again, some of the magic sellotape will hold those wires in place while we turn them over and solder them in. We've now got a little bit of a spider going on with all sorts of fancy colours but in your case it'll all be red unless you've got plenty of wire hanging around too. One thing to note, the red wire from the battery it's not connected straight into the board. We've used a piece of red wire because that's going to be the switch on the potentiometer to turn it on and off. So the next stage we're going to put it into our little box. As usual I'm going to use my trusty tape just to hold the circuit board in place while we get everything soldered. Okay, it should be reasonably secure so I can fiddle with my wires. I'm going to bring nice straight connections for my speakers, which if you remember were the grey and the pink. So bend them into place. Then we know where they're going to be. We can use our cutters to cut them to the right length. And we know they're the right length, so now when I get hold of them to strip them, they're going to go back in the right place. Okay. A couple of spots of solder on the speaker and then we'll get those hooked into place. Just wait for the soldering iron to get warm again. Blob there, blob here, and we can hold the wire over, therefore we can just put an extra mate, be sure of that connection. I'm going to do the same with this potentiometer and this potentiometer. I'll leave the switch wire for a moment and we'll show you that in a second. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut the wires to length, bent them roughly into place, and now I can go ahead and solder those up. We'll just trim the excess off. And the two red wires, one from the battery terminal, the positive, they're going to go into these terminals here. 
So I'll fold those into place and get them ready for soldering. Okay, so this can now get soldered on. This one's the same as the others. But all I've done this one, because the battery terminal is flexible, I've pushed it through and hooked it back on itself. That just gives me a little bit more security so it doesn't pop off while I solder. And while I was at it, the battery box is now secured with the last piece of tape. So nearly there. Next thing to do is take the aerial wire and hook it onto the aerial. Okay, that's all ready to go. We just need to put the batteries in and test it. The thing is, I'm not overly happy with that aerial. So once again, out comes the engineer's friend. That's just giving it a little bit more bite. So let's get some batteries in and give it a try. Okay, so give this a go. So make sure the wires get folded in nicely. Take our cell tape off. Okay. Cool. So now I've fitted the knobs, which is dead simple, just a screwdriver in there. We've got volume and off. And tuning. There we go. Simple radio. Actually, I think the kits were pretty good. Yeah. I like it. <laughs>